All right, take a look at these prize cards. Nothing too big, I don't think. There was a tablet prize in the last two. I guess that's kind of annoying. Also, if Fabrizio doesn't... If Fabrizio doesn't search his deck before he ultra balls away MUV Max, that could be pretty punishing. And we'll see who's going first here. Brent is going first, so Brent has the possibility for the turn one path cheese. Um, but the only thing that's cheesy about... The only thing that's cheesy here is Brent's hand. Brent's hand sucks. <laughs> Brent's hand is the cheese. Yeah, that's terrible. Psychic active and pass. Sheesh. Oh, four card hand. No basic Pokemon. Could still have a course in there. So that's like what Fabrizio has to be thinking about here. Do I try and like overextend for a judge or extend into a judge? There's a tablet. You want to keep the tablets. Could Ultra Ball away a double turbo? Yeah, yeah. Just get rid of the double turbo and the box of disaster. That seems fine. Go get another another Genesect. Okay, this is going to be the true tell. Will Fabrizio get a Mew or a Genesect here? I think you get Genesect here. Because you can just draw one extra card with that last Genesect. And you don't really need another Mew on your bench here. Who cares about having another Mew? Wait. Hasn't committed to it yet. I'm doing a little price checking. Yeah, I think you get Genesect here. I want to believe Fabrizio thinks that as well. So I'm rooting for the Genesect grab here from Fabrizio. And this will forever solidify my opinion on if you get Mew or Genesect off this, first, off this Ultra Ball. There's way too many people get Mew off this Ultra Ball, I feel like, instead of getting a Genesect. I'm just trying to see more cards. Let's go. All right, I'm a bit, all right, for, I hope Fabrizio wins now. I'm a huge Fabrizio fan now. Fabrizio number one. <clears throat> Is it ever wrong to get Genesect here? Because if you draw the last Genesect, you don't want to bench it. That is, a, that is a thought. But you also just want to draw into good cards. Like, what if you just draw meh cards, play a couple. Draw meh cards, play a couple. And then you're like, okay... See, like this. Look at this hand. Is This hand sucks. Or it's pretty mid, right? It's like, okay, Genesect for one. Now let's say we draw... Now if we Genesect here for one and draw like one other playable card, or we can vacuum the card maybe, then... Ooh. Then do we get that last... Then we get to use the last Genesect draw. But... Oof. Does Fabrizio ever get rid of that double turbo to draw with his last Genesect? You kind of want to do it, to be honest, but you probably shouldn't do it. Because the, the double turbo is like your retreat. Oh, or are we going to commit to the four seal stone? Using four seal stone is really bad, though. You want to try and save it to get around Roxanne Path. <sighs> Rizzo, uh, pass. I think I like, the, I like the pass there. I think I like the pass here for sure. But yeah, like I say, if Rizzo drew like a box of disaster, then the last chance I get to draw one more. Um... Path immediately from Brent. And this is going to telegraph to Fabrizio that Brent's hand sucks. This Abyss Seeking here telegraphs that. And I think if Fabrizio had used the V-Star power there, I think Fabrizio would have gone for a judge. Um, but now that Fabrizio sees this, I'm sure Fabrizio is like super happy to have not... Uh, oh, there we go. Battle of APS on the top. Perfect. Vacuum target. Catch active. Vacuum the Battle of VIP pass. Probably go ahead and play a tablet here. You probably just go ahead and play one of the tablets. Um, you could try and hold out for the choice belt, but that seems like a little... I would. I think that extra card is probably worth trying to get here. Yeah, I like the tablet play here. You still have choice belt plus double tablet to one at KO V-Star later. Ooh, that's a tough draw, though. That's tough. That's not a good draw at all. You do have the KO on the active still no matter what, so you could boss up the other Tina just to draw one more card here. You really do not want to cram that tablet. I would not recommend cramming the tablet. <clears throat> you could just boss up the other Tina and draw one, though. Gonna commit to the V-Star, though. And what do you even grab here? An Ultra Ball? Yeah, thin out the hand. Get rid of what? Path. Do you get rid of the boss as well? I guess you kind of have to. Grabs the Ultra Ball. Keep the cram around. Boss is a really good card for next turn, but if Brent's hand continues to suck, maybe Brent has to go into another Abyss Seeking anyways. Brent really does not want to go into another Abyss Seeking here. There we go. There's the Mew. Um, Could have got a Mew V instead. That's actually interesting. You could have got a Mew V instead here as Fabrizio. Oh, did end up keeping the boss. Okay. Now, the cr it could have kept the cram instead, and the cram could have led to more options, but boss is pretty good for next turn, so... You really need another Mew here, honestly. Oh, sheesh. Damn. That's tough. You don't want to play this Iono as Fabrizio. Brent's turn last turn was really bad, but you also want a Mew V here so you can switch between Mews on the next turn. Oh, is going to commit to the Iono? Brent's loving that. Brent, Brent's hand sucked, and then Abyss Seeking, and it still sucked. And now we get a fresh six cards for Brent. Brent's back into this one all of a sudden. It was looking really bad for Brent. That hand still sucks. <laughs> Dude, what? Has Brent tried drawing good cards? No, no Colrus yet. There's still a possibility for a Colrus, though. 
I mean, you don't know what he got off the Abyss Seeking? I'm pretty sure it was bad. I saw some of it. I'm pretty sure Brent's Abyss Seeking was not good. I don't think there were any good cards. I don't think there was like a Colrus or anything. Why didn't he pick the Mu V Star, the Mu V Max with the Forest? Because he wanted to thin out the hand with Ultra Ball instead. Yeah, which also gets you the Mu V Max, and then you get to draw more. I mean, Fabrizio doesn't know that. Oh, Fabrizio doesn't know that the hands are... Yeah, but like, you know the initial cards weren't good. So it's either Brent got two of four cards that were really good, or... Uh, but now you're giving Brent six cards. So six is just better than two of four. So, yeah. You definitely... you. On average, Fabrizio knows the Iono is going to net Brett, Brent a better hand than what Brent previously had. On average, you know that. So you don't want an Iono there because you know on average you're putting Brent in a better spot. <clears throat> so ideally, Fabrizio did not want an Iono there. But I think for the situation, it was probably fine. Um, has also burned the V-Star power as well. Um, I think there is there's only one path gone as well. So Roxanne Path is a little bit more deadly here for sure. Fabrizio is going to get a decent draw before uh, taking this knockout, though. Six off Iono is better than whatever the two... Well, it's not guaranteed... Well, yeah, it's not guaranteed better, but on average it is. So you play with the idea that it is better and then make your plays around if it is better or not. But it doesn't mean you just shouldn't ever play the Iono. It just means I'm probably giving them a better hand off this Iono, but screw it. I, ha I need to see more stuff myself. Okay. Pretty good draw here from Fabrizio. The Retreat... And then here we go. Technoblast knockout. There was the tablet played. Still has plenty of tablets left. Still has the choice belt and two tablets. Be able to get through a Tina V Star at some point. There is a tablet prized. It's no longer in the last two prize cards. Well, actually, it could still be in the last two prize cards. Heavy Ball was played, and it, that's where it was, but now it could be somewhere else. Okay. Over to Brent. Attach retreat into the comfy. Really needs to find a Colrus here. Doesn't want to shuffle the deck yet. No Colrus. Jet and a Nest Ball. I think you take the Nest Ball. You could net Nest Ball for Greninja and a Tina V here from Brent. You really don't want to shuffle the deck, though. So this sucks to shuffle the deck, because you know the bottom cards of the deck are all garbage. He's going for the Comfy, actually, but can't retreat into... Oh, no, just doing the prize counting. Okay. All right, checking happening. And then, like I said, we're probably going to grab... Well, Greninja has to be the grab here because we need to see more cards. So it has to be Greninja. And then I guess you could hold the second Nest Ball and not play it, but you probably want to get a Tina V. So you may as well, you could just commit to getting the Tina V now to thin out the deck so you lower your chance of drawing the Tina V off of the Greninja draw. Um, but I'm curious to see what Brent does. Because I think that getting Colrus here is like so important that Brent should probably just commit. To oh, goes for a Comfy though? You read it. Wait. Uh, I guess that kind of makes sense. Well... So if Brent gets a switch card here, you can use Comfy. But if you get a switch card here and you have a second Tina in play, you could use Abyss Seeking as well. Um, I Because now, now, now not only do you have to find a Colrus here as Brent, you don't have to find a Tina. Because like Fabio, Fabrizio, excuse me, Fabrizio could whiff the boss KO. But also Fabrizio could not whiff the boss KO. I feel like just getting a Tina there. I like the uh, getting a Tina there better for sure from Brent. Does have Path plus Tina V-Star, though, to protect the Tina on the bench. I guess always had the Tina V-Star in hand. So maybe relying on that to protect you is, like, fine. But Fabrizio does have Choice Belt double double uh, tablet in the deck. So it is possible Fabrizio gets the KO on this Tina. I think no matter what here... Eh, I don't know if that's true. Do you always go for KO Tina here? You should... I, I feel like you should... Punching it seems pretty good to me at the very least. Punching the Tina seems kind of good. Um, Yeah, punching Tina is cool. And if you get the KO, dope. If you whiff, then you just 2 it KO it. You can, like psychic leap KO it afterward. I gotta even commit the tablets because what's gonna happen here is you punch the Tina and if Brent benches another Tina V, you can boss KO that with your uh choice belt or a tablet. Um and then from there, yeah, I like the I like the the boss punch here at the very least. And if you get the KO, that's dope. If you don't get the KO, whatever. Um, that's fine. But I think you should go all out here as Fabrizio. Because if you just punch it really hard but don't KO it, then you can boss KO the next one anyways. Uh, and it'll be all good from there. All right, here comes the vacuum. Get rid of the Path to the Peak. Has the switch. Has the boss. We'll see if Fabrizio commits the boss. So, so, so by playing like this, that means Fabrizio is like, I actually, if I whiff the tablets, I don't want to just punch your Tina. I kind of just like punching the Tina here, to be honest. I like just punching the Tina here. Fabrizio disagrees, though. Fabrizio's like, I'm good to one-hit KO the Tina if I draw into the one-hit KO. If not, I'm just I'm content with KO in the Comfy. I like the idea of just going aggressive and trying to KO this Tina, and if not, you just 
punch it twice. But Fabrizio was like, I'd rather just get a prize card here and want to KO your Tina later. Which we'll see how this we'll see how this plays out. The the tablet is still in the last two prize cards. The heavy ball was played, right? I thought it was played. Oh <laughs> no. Oh, Brent finally finds a chorus, but it's between a chorus and a Tina, and you do need another Tina probably here as Brent. Um, there's a nest ball though. That becomes a Tina. What else does Brent want to keep here? Keeps the switch carts. You do want to do you want to do something this turn. Um you ideally want to punch with a Tina, right? You just want two Tinas here to close out the game, I feel like. Yeah, I feel like, I feel like you just want to punch with a Tina. Can you star Requiem this turn as, as Brent? Can you go star wreck knockout? No, maybe you don't star wreck this turn because you don't want to get Iona low. Maybe if you can just lost impact. The thing is, you just want something in your active that, that Fabrizio can't KO. You want to end up with a Pokemon in your active that Fabrizio can't KO. That's another thing with playing it the way that Fabrizio did play it last turn by drawing the one prize card is now... Um, now you also get you could get you could have got Roxanne this turn, you could have got Roxanne this turn is Fabrizio, with being less set up to handle the Tinas. But if you boss punch the Tina, you can't get Roxanne, and now it's easier to get your KOs as the game progresses. So yeah, looking back, I really do like the idea of just kind of boss punching the Tina last turn from Fabrizio. To be honest, um, the one prize is like okay, but like yeah, you go into Roxanne range as well without four Seal Stone around. Gate and boss opts for the gate. There is already one gate in the law zone. And then, yeah, here comes the, the Mirage Gate. So we can get the Lost Impact here from Brent. But Brent does not have... Or are we going to go with the Sableye play from Brent here, actually? Wait, no, we only have 9 in the Lost one, or do we have 10? Brent could Sableye here as, as well. Um, just checked on YouTube. It was double, double Mirage Gate, Counter Catcher, and Rod. That's what I thought. I thought there wasn't a course there. Okay, jetting up. So we are going with the Tina punch here. No secondary Tina, though. Um, so if Fabrizio gets the KO here, then Brent's response has to be countercatcher Roxanne. Um, so if Fabrizio gets the one hit KO on this Tina, which I'm sure Fabrizio is going to go for, the response from Brent needs to be that countercatcher Roxanne. Um, actually, though, hold up. Fabrizio, uh, Fabrizio actually doesn't have to KO the Tina. Fabrizio could go boss KO the Sableye. But then you're going to get Roxanne to two and then have to reach for the... Gust on the, the KO on the Tina. I feel like trying to get the KO on the Tina now makes a little bit more sense. Um, is there a world where you psychic leap off the damage? I could see that actually. You could just you could just psychic leap off the damage. What if you went boss psychic leap? Is that ever the play? Actually, boss psychic leap. Ooh, what does that lead to? You boss psychic leap, then Brent can go counter catcher Roxanne Star Requiem. Man, that would be interesting. You would have to burn a tablet, though, and then you can't KO Tina at that. You wouldn't be able to want to KO Tina. Fabrizio's going for it, though. This is going to be a psychic leap play for sure. Now, you could get your last tablet off your prize cards. Just punch leap. Punching the Tina with leap, I think, is also pretty good as well. I actually like that play as well, Jake. And then you could have put a box of disasters on the Mew V as well, right? You send up the Mew V with a box of disasters. I don't know why Fabrizio's attaching the box of disasters to the active here. I assume it's getting psychic leaped, right? I assume we're psychic leaving this back to the... Is Fabrizio not going to play the tablet? That would be interesting, actually. Fabrizio is not playing the tablet. So, so, so Fabrizio is going to psychic leap the Sableye, but not actually KO it. He's going to put 50 on it. Actually, I don't... That's interesting. Here comes a cram on the feather ball. Roxanne is still active throughout all this, though, which doesn't feel great for Fabrizio. This is an interesting play, though. I kind of like this. Well, we'll see how it goes. Gives, him, gives like another turn to force the V-Star on the active. Well, you're going to force that no matter what though, right? Like you're psychic leaping here no matter what. But now Fabrizio is not going to knock it out. Which makes you think that the... Oh, that's why Fabrizio didn't want the choice, the box of disasters on the bench Mew. Because we're not KOing the Sableye. If we're KOing the Sableye, then the box of disasters makes sense on the Mew V on the bench. But now you want to keep the option of the choice belt for that bench Mew V instead of the box of disasters. Because Brent could have Countercatcher Roxanne KO your bench Mew V max. Yeah, it's definitely an interesting, uh, interesting situation. Fabrizio actually might take nothing off this cram. <laughs> Fabrizio might actually take nothing off the cram. Goes for an Ultra Ball. I don't think you want to Ultra Ball anything out of the hand. Well, you want to Ultra Ball away the... Um, did he just Techno Blast? I just joined. No, he just used Max Miracle. 
Gonna sec for one. Oh, wait, there's nothing to Ultra Ball out of this hand. Yeah, there's nothing to Ultra Ball. Oh, this hand is all good. You want to keep literally everything in the hand. But getting the Ultra Ball is still fine, I think. Um, you actually can't go cram for nothing. Oh, yeah, that's true. You can't even fail the cram. Never mind. So he had to take something. Ultra Balling away, boss, and escape rope. Does still have the pal pad left, I believe. The escape rope's not super important. But actually, the escape rope's a way to, like... Get around a Tina V. Well, would that ever matter? Maybe it doesn't matter. The Palpad's in the deck as well, so it has access to plenty of boss. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you have to take something off cram. You have to take something off cram. All right, three from Genesect. There's the Choice Belt, but we're not attaching it. Oh, wait, there's Double Tablet and Choice Belt, but no boss to go with it. Oh, this would have been... Should Fabrizio have just gone all out to try and KO the Tina? Now I'm like thinking about that as like a potential play. Fabrizio could have gone all out to try and KO the Tina. Or is Fabrizio just going to max Miracle KO? Oh, does just go for the max... Wait, then... Okay. So I don't hate the max Miracle KO either. Well, I don't know. We leave all that damage there. So now... Well, I don't know. Because now Brent can push up another one prizer for the KO. Like, Brent can get... Cramorant KO or Sableye KO and not put a two prizer in the active. So that means Fabrizio needs boss. But also Fabrizio needs Palpad now. See, so if you Psychic Leap back to the deck, it would be interesting... But then I guess you don't take a prize card and then Brent just Sableyes again on the next turn, right? Because you didn't take a knockout. I guess that makes sense. But here comes the Roxanne. Does Brent have Cram? Or could recover Sableye, I guess would be another play. Oh, wait. Comfy gets the knockout. With Comfy can take the knockout here. <laughs> With the Psychic Energy. That's broken. I don't really like the box of Disasters on the active, though. Because depending on how Brent draws, if Brent draws into only Star Requiem, then Brent could... Oh, yeah, because then Brent could star Requiem, KO the benched Mew, and then this active Mew doesn't have room for Choice Belt. There's the Cram. No path. Although Brent might be out of path, to be honest. If Brent's out of path, I think Fabrizio's going to win this, but... Get up the other Comfy. We're going in again. Super odd. There was a gate in Brent's last hand, so if there was a Psychic in the deck, Brent could have done that. All right, so now Fabrizio needs everything. Fabrizio needs the uh, whole enchilada here with uh, choice belt. Wait. Yeah, choice belt, double tablet, boss. Oh, well, there's the pal pad. That's a good start. Get back both boss. And then choice belt, double tablet, boss, KO, Tina. So that's a pretty good start. Yeah, no, no path. That's literally the best start. Palpat is like the, the card you want to start your sequence with. And has the Mew. All right, this is going to be pretty unlikely to whiff at this point. Can also leap. Can also leap for the turn. Yeah, if you do whiff. Ooh. Yeah, Fabrizio can. Oh, that's true. Fabrizio can also leap and just chill for a turn. That hand, actually, that draw was maybe the worst possible. Some of the worst cards you could draw. Double VIP pass and judge. Some of the worst cards you could draw here is Fabrizio. I don't know what's left in the deck. There's a lot of good cards. Well, actually, I don't know how many like Ultra Balls and Crams are left in the deck for Fabrizio either, though, to be honest. You could go, to be honest, Fabrizio could go attach a Choice Belt, play Power Tablet. And then if you and if you judge and just find the other Power Tablet, then you can just Psychic Leap KO Cram and then Boss KO next turn with judging. So that would be a fine way for Fabrizio to approach this. If we get Boss... Oh my! Well, that's it. That's a guaranteed whiff. That's a guaranteed whiff. So now we want. Now we need to play for the psychic leap KO on the cram. Um. Yeah, we need to play for the psychic leap KO on the cram. I think there's a boss left for Brent. So you're like threatening the Mu V Max. So now we need to get second tablet, psychic leap back to the deck, and then boss KO one prize our next turn for Fabrizio here. Yeah, that was, an, that was bad. That draw was so bad. I don't know how many good cards are left for Fabrizio, though. If there's that many bad cards in the deck. Oh, boy. All right. Yeah, how, does Brent even have a path left? Can Fabrizio go all out and just burn all this? Because you could switch into Mew VMAX. There's the vacuum. Give up the Judge and a Force Seal Stone. Can you actually get rid of the switch card as Fabrizio, though? Or could a Genesect get trapped? I'm actually not sure. Is Fabrizio out of switch cards? You might need to save that switch. There's not that many cards left in the deck. I mean, these are all good cards that Fabrizio could have drawn. Instead, Drew literally keeps both. Keeps both. So he does keep it out to the path. 
and keeps the switch card. There's the tablet. So psychic leap and that. Oh, all right. That hit's pretty good. That hit. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Yeah, because the reason you'd want to keep the switch here is for the possibility that your genocide gets boss trapped. Um. Uh -huh. There we go. Psychic leap. KO the cram. Pushes up the mu v. And the hand is super good here as well. So Brent needs Roxanne again. Brent needs Roxanne here. Well, to be honest, if Fabrizio draws how he did at the beginning of this turn, then maybe Brent doesn't need Roxanne. Um. Yeah, can Brent, can Brent like cheese here? Is there any cheese cheese play? I don't think so. I don't think there's any cheese to be had. Is there a Roxanne left? I think there might be. There's Countercatcher. So you could go... I don't know. What are you going to Countercatcher here? No Roxanne. Oh, boy. <clears throat> Fabrizio has answers for everything. Has answers for Path. Has answers for uh, Genesect getting Countercatchered. Um, here we go. No Roxanne confirmed from Brent. There it is. A little bit late. If you countercatcher KO the Genesect, you could countercatcher KO the Mew V off the bench to reduce the odds of the Mew attacking on the next turn. Fabrizio doesn't have a ton of fusion Pokemon in play at that point as well if you if you do take a knockout this turn. So if you KO the Mew V with the fusion, it is possible that Fabrizio whiffs the, the boss KO. I don't think it, Fabrizio doesn't have it in hand. Fabrizio is still like a card short here. Um... Dang the nerves, Monka S. I don't think there's any nerves on Brent's side. Brent's just always uh, shaking while he plays. Covers Tina, gets Tina. There is a path left. So does that mean there's does Brent, Brent, Brent play four path then? I'm actually curious about that. Curious about that for this matchup then. I think it is four path. I think we've seen four path at this point. You counter catcher a Genesect to limit draw. I don't think the last Genesect's gonna be able to draw cards. I think I think I don't know. It's close. You do limit the draw, but there's you're drawing so little. Is the last Genesect going to even be able to draw cards? I don't even know, to be honest. All right, here we go. Fabrizio's going to go all in at this point. We have the Mew V. We're literally just an energy away from for, for Fabrizio. Vacuum. Play the boss. Play the switch. Vacuum. Play the Lost City as well. Don't vacuum the boss. No, wait. Is Fabrizio going to vacuum the boss? Oh, I see. Okay. You could vacuum the boss because then if you draw into boss, you can play the boss. But what if you don't draw into the boss? Oh, wait. There's another boss. <laughs> Dude, I was so worried, bro. I was like, wait. What if you don't draw into the other boss? I literally thought there was one boss in the hand. All right. Three cards. Is it even possible to whiff? I don't even know, to be honest. There's the energy, though. There was a double turbo in the hand as well. Techno Blast, Fabrizio takes game one. That was a lot closer than I thought it would be. Um, Fabrizio never went really... There was a couple turns where Fabrizio could have gone all in for the Tina KOs and chose to kind of play a little bit more conservatively. Um, so it felt it did feel like that gave... It did feel like that gave Brent an out almost to come back though. By, but like Fabrizio never went all in to try and go for those big knockouts. Now I'm not saying Fabrizio for sure, sh for sure should have gone all in. If Fabrizio had ever gone all in and hit one of those big KOs, Fabrizio would have just won the game. Um, but plays a little bit more conservatively. Keeps a couple more options around into the late game. Was able to pull off like that Psychic Leap play on the Cram, which is huge to be able to have that option with those last couple tablets because one tablet was prized. Um, and yeah, gets the game here in game one. <clears throat> I'm excited for this next this next game here. I appreciate the two-month reset there, sad boy. I appreciate the Prime sub, Unmay. Welcome to the Rap Hack. A lot of orange juice. We got plenty of refrigerators and eight months coming in from Specs. Appreciate that, Specs. All right, piling between games. It's a habit a lot of people do. Thoughts on Fabrizio's pile shuffling technique? It's pretty cringe. I'm not gonna lie. Pile shuffling is pretty cringe, but you know, I'm not here to say anyone can't do it. I'm just here to say it's cringe. Pile shuffle if you wish. <clears throat> Just know that I think you're cringe. You know, I think it's uh, wild how powerful this is to just say no retreat to your opponent. What you mean with like uh, Snorlax? Azul, well, what do you uh, hear in the headphones when you're on stage? It's just white noise. They just put white noise into the ears. It can be a little uh, jarring for some people on their first time, but you get used to it pretty quickly. All right, prize cards here. Double VIP pass prize for Brent. 
but I mean, Brent's going first, so it's going to all be about the opening hand anyways. Well, I guess like you have the Comfy start here. So the Comfy has less chance to find your Pokemon. And that's it. It's just one Comfy. No. Fabrizio can donk. The Psychic Leap donk. The Path? The Path Cheese? Will it be enough? Does Fabrizio have a Sparkle? I don't, oh, wait. I think Fabrizio... Oh, does Fabrizio have an out to the Path? I think Fabrizio... There's a judge. Okay, no donk. No donk. But the judge is still so brutal, bro. The judge is so brutal here. This is an, a, a disgustingly good start here for Fabrizio for the Pokemon. Doesn't have a counter to the path yet. The judge is still really brutal here, though, because Brent's hand has Chorus. <laughs> so Brent's going to go from a, a hand that has playable cards to hoping we find basics off Chorus to shuffle into the hand, draw four, and hopefully find basic Pokemon or Chorus. Um, but maybe Fabrizio doesn't find a, a, an answer off this judge. J Fabrizio plays a ton of outs to the path, though. At least three Vacuum, the Lost City, uh, four Seal Stones. There's another one. Oh, Cramomatic Heads. Uh, and Fabrizio doesn't need to get out of the path to the peak this turn. Fabrizio can get out of the path next turn and be just fine. Um, it is good to see. <laughs> it is good to see. No Donk, though. I Dude, I was like, I thought the Donk was going to be coming in. Based on uh, Fabrizio's facial expression when uh, Brent passed with Lone Comfy. But no donk. We should be all good. There's the forest. Okay. You don't have to do it this turn as Fabrizio. You could chill. Um, but I would at least attack. No, attach the four seal stone. Oh, wait, no, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. In my head, I was like scared of Iono, but no, we're chilling. All right. Back over to Brent. Does find a Tina. Oh, it's still bad here. I guess you just get second Tina here, right? Yeah, he gets second Tina. Could have gone for the donk. No, he couldn't have gone for the donk. He couldn't have gone for the donk. Because he already played Judge. Judge, you need to be able to play Elsa Sparkle. Appreciate the 2 month 3 sub there. Chief. Yeah, as soon as the Judge was played, it was impossible to go for the donk. <clears throat> oh, yeah, I panicked about the 4 shield stone there. I was like, but yeah, Brent doesn't play any hand disruption, so. And Fabrizio knows that. Just hold the 4 shield stone path. Yeah, Fabrizio 100% would have gone for the donk if the path wasn't there. 100%. Okay, Brent is going for another Comfy here. I was thinking maybe Brent was going to go for another Tina and then just use Abyss Seeking. Um, this does mean that Brent won't be able to guarantee Abyss Seeking this turn. Um, but Brent values trying to get Colrus more than doing Abyss Seeking plus having a backup Tina. Um, I can't say, yeah, I definitely can't say I disagree with this player or anything like that. Yeah, Brent is like, I just need a, I just need to get a, what's it called here? I need to get a Colrus. Give me the Colrus one time. Here we go. There's the Jet Energy. We're still a Abyss Seeking, but we don't have a backup Tina now. That's pretty rough. The Abyss Seeking is happening, but with no backup Tina. And the hand for Fabrizio is pretty sick. And the follow-up is not good. <laughs> it's not good. No. Get rid of the counter catcher, actually. I feel like when you're in this big, in this big of a hole, you'd maybe keep that. But yeah, the hand for Fabrizio is good. Here we go. And we're actually going to be able to loss on this Tina as well, which could be impactful. I think we're going to go for the Lost City here from uh, Fabrizio. Because the, the hand looked really good. I don't think we want to vacuum anything out of the hand. But is the Lost City prized? Velocity might be prized. Got to be a vacuum. So what are we going to vacuum away here? You could get rid of the Feather Ball, to be honest. And it depends how much you want to keep that tablet. Because you definitely keep the Choice Belt. Um, and then I believe one of the... You could get rid of the Ultra Ball. It depends how much you value the tablet. That's like the big question. Um, yeah, yeah, I think keep Ultra Ball, keep Tablet makes sense. Get rid of the Feather Ball. See if Fabrizio wants to go with, though. Fabrizio's not sure. Doesn't need to shuffle up. It's not going to be going back into the deck. Well, unless you keep the Feather Ball. You could keep the Feather... Maybe you do keep the Feather Ball. What if you kept the Feather Ball and got rid of the Ultra Ball? Um, I kind of like that. Wouldn't Lost City fuel Brent's Lost Zone? Yeah, but so does Lost Vacuum. It's like the same thing. But see, I think... So Fabrizio was going to get Lost City. Based on uh, Fabrizio's... How Fabrizio played that. Fabrizio was going to go get Lost City there. But then it was prized. And that means you could have kept all those cards in the hand. And then you would have been in a really, really good spot. Okay, Ultra Ball coming in. You hate to get rid of a bunch of cards you can already play. But you have to get rid of that uh, Fusion Energy here. We're going to Ultra Ball away. Heavy Fusion. Attach the Force Seal Stone. Play the Switch. Still need that Double Turbo Energy. It is possible for Fabrizio whiffs the Double Turbo Energy here. It is possible. <sighs> 
We'll see. That would that would give Brent some hope, to be honest. Well, the abyss seeking wasn't very good. That would give Brent a chance to top that course. Okay, switch into a new Mew. Here we go again. Draw five. Still drawing a lot of cards here, though, for for, for four Fabrizio. There's a double turbo. It's looking good. And clean Ultra Ball as well. Get rid of the fusion energy and the four seal stone. Or the no, VIP pass, excuse me. Another clean Ultra Ball thinning out those dead cards. The fusion energy isn't like always a dead card. And VIP pass, you want to kind of line up with Chromomatic, but this is like super clean. Second Mew VMAX setup. The choice belt's in play. Only one Tina's in play for Brent. It's about to go down. Another draw for four from Genesect. One, two, three, four. Here we go four from Fabrizio. Plenty of good options for the next turn as well. Don't even need to play the box of disaster here from Fabrizio, to be honest, because your hand can't get disrupted on this next turn. So could have held that. Um, uh, potentially utilize it later. Um, or as discard fodder or something else. Okay, over to Brent. Tina is a good comeback deck, though. There's still some hope for Tina here. Uh for Brent here. And Tina, I guess. Yeah, Tina is one of the, the second best comeback deck in the game. Um Brent's eyeing up that Greninja here initially. Brent has one Roxanne prized. Well, we have access to one Roxanne. That's the important part. We need to get access to that first Roxanne. Roxanne path is still very much live. The four seals has been burned from, from, from Fabrizio. But like Brent does need to... Actually, to be honest, does Brent ever... Huh, what does Brent do here? Ideally, I think Brent attacks with Sableye and benches two Tinas. That's a lot. That's a lot to get. But if Brent can pull it off... Ooh, got rid of the Psychic, though. We needed that for our... Should have got rid of the, the Grass here. Attacking with Sableye plus Bench Double Tina is unlikely. There's a Colrus, finally. But it was possible. Now it's going to be harder to pull off, potentially. I mean, it would have been tough to pull off in general. Yeah, I think that would have been the play. Tina V-Star. No Tinas. No, no Tinas. Oh my goodness. Okay, we did get to 10 in the loss zone though. Can we at least attack with... Can we at least attack with Sableye here to set up some of these Mews? We're not going to have a follow-up from Atina, but doing a Sableye attack here would be nice, I feel like. And then we have Roxanne Path for next turn. Bunch of Super Odds in hand. Here comes the Mirage Gate. Grass Psychic, Water. Water Active Psychic to Sableye, I assume. There we go. Set up, ready to cook. Say if I would put 444 on the Muse, turn off Disaster and keep it. I'm mean, turning off Disaster doesn't really matter too much. You're going to go three to each of the V Maxes and then six on the Mew V. So three to each of the V Maxes puts them in uh, the range of Loss Impact, and putting six on the Mew V puts it in range of Sableye. Another Sableye attack. That's what I would assume Brent's going to go with here. We'll see what Brent decides, though. I, I really don't like that Brent got rid of Countercatcher earlier in the game, though. Because that I think that might come back to not really like bite Brent, but like it might become a. Yeah, so it's 336. Yeah, the 336. So now Sableye threatens the Mew V, and then Lost Impact threatens the Mew V maxes. I really don't like that we lost Brent gave up Countercatcher earlier. I forget what the, the what, what Brent took instead of Countercatcher, but I felt like if we're going this far behind, we want that those cheesy options for sure. We want the cheesy options. There's Iono. All right, six new cards for Brent. This is fine. Because Brent just is has to do another stabilized turn, anyways. It wasn't a, a Roxanne turn this next turn, anyways. This turn for Brent is find two Tina V's, and then next turn is Roxanne. So this is... Oh, there's another Countercatcher there. Wait. Do we not get rid of Countercatcher, or does Brent just play two Countercatcher? Brent just might play two Countercatcher. Might be two boss, two Countercatcher, or maybe it's just... What's it called? I wonder if we ever start to see uh, Fabrizio Psychic Leap these Mews out of play. You don't have to hear us, Fabrizio. You can just sit here and, and swing. There's the Retreat. I haven't seen a tablet get played yet, so it looks like it's going to probably just be a Max Miracle. And here it comes. Max Miracle? Good Psychic Leap. Well, you would want to play a tablet with it, though. Two boss, two counter catcher? Okay. All right. Boss top deck, not great. Has a Nest Ball, so it does have the double Tina here. Double Tina. Get rid of Catcher Sableye and v Sableye, but does play the double counter card. I was just kind of assuming Brent only played. Does use the gate here. 
That seems kind of aggressive. Why would we use the gate right now as Brent? I don't know if I like that. What if this Tina gets Gus KO'd and we just run out of energy? Um, needs Rock's Path. No, you don't need Rock's Path this turn. You have one more turn to find Rock's Path. You don't need. You can get Rock's Path next turn. I actually think it's incorrect to go for Rock's Path. I think we're just going to see the Colors get played here from Brent. Oh, wait, there's not another Tina. Okay, this makes sense. I thought we had two Tinas. I thought we had a Tina in hand, and then we Nest Ball for one. Yeah, Colrishes are pretty much dead at this point. Not too late then? No, that's just not true. Rock's... No, Rock's Path... Why do, you, why do you guys think Rock's Path is a must this turn? You just need to bench two Tinas this turn. We just need to put down two Tina Vs this turn. If we bench two Tina Vs, then we Roxanne Path next turn. Brent was never going for Roxanne Path this turn. I guarantee you. Now Brent's just gonna lose though because they did not get down to Tina to get down two Tinas. You lose if you don't do it now. That's just not true. You can just bench two Tinas and then Roxanne Path next turn. Fabrizio has three prize cards. Oh, there is another Tina. There was another Tina in the handhold the whole time. Yeah, I don't like like I don't I don't know about Brent playing the gate this turn then. Because now your your Tina with the energy could get boss KO'd, and now you have to find another Mirage Gate. Oh, but it is happening already. Okay, that's fine then. If we have double Mirage Gate like this, then I'm 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 cool with that. All right. Because you can't boss and judge. Yeah, yeah. I mean, as long as he has the outs to the second gate, which he does, then I'm fine with it. I thought there was only one gate in hand, so I was like questioning it, but. And maybe I guess it, it's still correct to do it, so you like increase your odds of hitting other stuff off Colrus as well. So I can increase your odds of hitting that gate by using the first gate first. You guys are capping, bro. All right, here we go. We need Roxanne. There's Path. We need that as well. We need Roxanne and Path. Oh, is he even going to throw out this, this Path aggressively? That, that could be pretty good if both these teams can become V-Stars. I don't know if we have two V-Stars left here for Brent. I don't know if we have two V-Stars left here for Brent, though. There's a heads on the cram. Do you even go for the boss KO here as Fabrizio? Or do you just knock out the active? You could like, but okay, Fabrizio could psychic leap here into a Mew V and force. No, you could go judge psychic leap here as Fabrizio. Judge psychic leap actually seems like the play here. I like judge psychic leap here for sure. And then just leave, leave your Mew, push the Mew V. I like the idea of it. That seems pretty good. Boss KO here doesn't seem that great. It seems okay. Boss KO is pretty good too, though, because then you can win with boss or escape rope potentially if the escape rope's left. You could almost just grab an ultra ball here and thin out some dead cards out of the hand. Oh no, we need a way to bump this, this path first. I'm hoping Brent has a path left, or I really don't like this path from Brent on this turn. Yeah. We'll see what Fabrizio wants to go for, though. I'm curious to see what Fabrizio locks in. There's the judge. So I think it is going to be judge psychic leap here. Okay, I like this a lot, actually. So now Brent needs... Brent needs, like, counter catcher. Um, Brent needs counter catcher. And... Roxanne path. <laughs> counter catcher, Roxanne path. Although, with this play, though, Brent could attack with a... Uh, is even is Sableye even an option here? I don't know if there's a Sableye left or if we could even get a Sableye here for Brent. Those are the paths. No Roxanne, but does have concealed cards and Comfy to use here. Fabrizio's deck is going to be pretty thinned out, though, at this point. There's not going to be too much, too many bad cards left. There's the escape rope as well. Oh, they can't see escape rope doesn't work because there's double Tina, though. No, the escape rope. What a, if with the escape rope left, I actually don't hate the idea of boss KO Tina there because then you could escape rope around the other Tina. But this does force Brent to find the counter catcher as well on top of everything else. But Fabrizio could have gone boss KO Tina and then had escape rope left to just be go escape rope win. Um, there we go. Oh, not even going to psychic leap. Just going to go with the max miracle. Okay. So that the, the, we don't need the counter catcher here from Brent. We just need the Roxanne now. We don't need the counter catcher. There's the counter catcher. Where's the Roxanne though? There's the Roxanne. Okay. The comeback is possible. Brent needs... Oh, you KO the Choice Belted one as well. You can KO the Choice Belted... Oh, but you just want to save it? Maybe you don't want to KO the Choice Belted Mew Max. Because you want to be able to chase the other Mew Max. Ah, you have... Do you have boss left? I don't know if you have boss left here for Brent. 
Dusted up? I wonder if actually Brent should have burned the switch cart. Here comes we could now the switch cart's going back to the deck, but you don't need to keep the switch cart. Here, Blaze, I got you. You can keep repeating yourself all you want, but you can do it in silence now. Go go to a mirror and then repeat nah, it's too late, Mew one for ten minutes, and I'll see you in a bit. Both Boston lost up and countercatcher last gust. Okay, I guess we had to keep the countercatcher around then. There's that switch cart, but we got the Tina. That's the important part. I wonder if, yeah, I wonder if we should have just like burned the switch cart though, because you can't even switch cart a Tina Vsar out of the active anyways. Why, yeah, why did why didn't Brent burn the switch cart there? I don't think there's a reason to not have. The hand for Fabrizio is a judge and a nest ball. And then here comes. Do we go with the star requiem here for Brent? You have to go with the lost impact, right? Just in case. That'd be my guess is we have to go with the lost impact here. Gonna go with the... Okay. Keeping the energy around. It seems close. It seems like a close call. Goes with the star wreck. But we could have lost impacted and energy off the active and energy off the bench, Tina. Top deck boss? But that's not good enough for Fabrizio. We got the double V star here. So it has to be the judge. Nest ball first though. Do we have any Vs? Do we have any uh, fusion Pokemon left? We want a Mew V ideally here. There is a Mew V. And then does Fabrizio draw a way to bump Pat to the peak? Has Fabrizio played any power tablet left? I don't think so. Fabrizio could just draw into double power tablet off this. Um, and if Fabrizio whiffs, we do just see this. We will just see a psychic leap here from Fabrizio. This is like this is still a tough comeback here for for Brent. One tablet. Oh, not done yet. Do you cram the tablet or do you just go with the psychic leap? You cram the tablet to try and win the game this turn, which you could. Or do you psychic leap and cram the tablet next turn? Wait for a different top deck. If this is the tails, Fabrizio's living off a top deck fully. If this is the heads, there's a good chance that Fabrizio can win the game this turn. It's a heads! Oh, that's huge! Here comes the lost vacuum. There's not that many cards left in the deck. Wait. Oh, there is two tablet left. But I think just bumping this... Well, actually, no. Brent does have one path left. But did Brent get the Roxanne off the prize cards? Brent, like, needs Rox a, re a Roxanne path reset here. Yeah, Brent needs, like, Roxanne path reset here. Vacuum away the Elsa Sparkle. Bumps the path to the peak. All the fusion Pokemon are here. Already attached for turn. Fabrizio did already attach. No, wait, did Fabrizio attach? Oh, I guess not. Maybe. Maybe I'm wrong. I thought Fabrizio attached to the movie on the bench. Was that last turn? Um, That must have been last turn. All right, here we go. First Genesect for six. Two tablets left. One tablet. Okay. Vacuum can... You can maybe just draw the whole deck here as Fabrizio, to be honest. Cram the escape rope. Vacuum the path. Or you could even play the path and then vacuum the path. So you could burn one more card out of your hand. Then draw another six. Draw another six here sounds good to me. Let's see if Fabrizio tries to play it a little bit more conservatively. He has played a lot of stuff pretty conservatively up to this point. Starts with the cram. Heads here just wins the game. That's it. <laughs> That'll do it. Second tablet coming down. There's one power tablet. And here comes the second power tablet. And the Technoblast Fabrizio gets the dub